morning and welcome. Um, it's fantastic to have you all join us here today. Um, we're in a world where we can't see your faces, but we know you're there. Um, and greetings to everyone um, and welcome to this session. My name is Cindy Lanferna de Lamotte and I'm Head of Customer and Community here at Harvest. And together with my colleague, Andrew Coulson um, and Belinda and Sheridan from Banyol City Council. Oh the gosh. purpose of the webinar today is to share knowledge and insights with our customer community in, in order for all of us to learn and grow together. And this week in the practice of engaging children in community projects that impact their lives. Our session is intended to be informal and we'll guide um, the conversation through a series of questions. And we'll be finishing promptly at 11.45. If you've got any questions at all, please enter them into chat and my colleague Andrew will forward them into the conversation. But first, my welcome to country. A quote from Auntie Joy Murphy Wanden, an Aboriginal elder of the Wurundjeri people. She says, welcome to country is a really important way of giving Aboriginal people back their place in society and an opportunity for us to say we are real, we are here, and today we welcome you to our land. It's paying respect in an informal sense and following a traditional custom in a symbolic way. I would like to acknowledge that I'm hosting this session on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respect to elders both past, present and emerging. Um, I would like to welcome to the stage Sheridan Bourne Community Engagement Officer and Belinda Coombs Communications Officer from Banyol City Council in Victoria. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Sheridan, I um, know that you're in a different place to I am, and I'd love you to do a welcome to country from where you are in the world. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. Grounded in body, presence and place, I acknowledge the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people as the traditional custodians of the land that holds me. I pay my respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Elders past, present and emerging. Thank you, Sheridan. Thank you. Um, we're looking so much, um, we're looking really forward to unpacking this amazing project, the children's recipe for a good life. So let's get straight into it. Sheridan, tell us what was the objective of this project? Mm, beautiful, thanks Cindy. Um, look, in terms of the objective or what we were trying to achieve with this particular engagement project, um, the primary aim was to seek children's input as key stakeholders into the development of the child, youth and family plan. We also had some secondary aims as well. So these were to highlight children as active and engaged citizens and vital stakeholders in civic participation, show our commitment as signatories to the Victorian Child Friendly Cities and Communities Charter, uphold the child safe standards, specifically in relation to child safe standard number seven, which is about empowering children and recognising, acknowledging the fact that children have a right to have a say, be heard um, and have their concerns and ideas taken seriously. We also wanted to raise awareness of the child, youth and family plan in general. And lastly, we really wanted to use this project as an opportunity to demonstrate the appropriateness and dynamic functionality of the Hive as a tool for children's engagement online. We haven't actually done any child specific engagement using Hive. Um, so this project was really a perfect opportunity to see what was possible. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we know when we see the end result of a project like this, that there's a huge amount of thinking and planning that goes into it. And I know you've got a few gray hairs, but you also had a lot of fun. Can you tell us a little, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the preparation that went into this? Well, thanks for noticing my new style. Um, my preference is to call them silver. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yes, absolutely a little bit more silver after this one. But you're so right. I mean, it, you know, it's not always the funnest bit, but there's a lot of planning that happens behind the scenes prior to an engagement project going live. Uh, and I know, given the audience, I'm probably singing to the choir here. But we all know you can't build a house without a blueprint. Part of our internal process um, for the community engagement at Banyol is that we work with project leads to develop an engagement plan. These engagement plans really distill the engagement purpose and objectives, and they give your engagement program a true north, so you're always staying to course. They explore the project negotiables and non-negotiables, so it's really clear what stakeholders can and can't actually influence. 
They ensure clarity around how any information gathered will be used and they explore and identify the stakeholders, engagement methods and channels of promotion and determine what our measures of success will be. Our engagement plans are actually quite detailed and a lot of hard thinking happens at this stage and a significant amount of work went into this project in particular. Given this particular time in history, um, this plan had to remain quite fluid while we were navigating the impacts of COVID-19 and how they would impact on in-person activities. So the project team in children's services, Libby and Sharon, are both really, really creative people and had some great ideas for in-person activities, some really fun stuff that we we're excited about. But given all that was happening, eventually we had to make the call to select online as our primary method of engagement. The good thing about this choice though was that we knew that this particular decision was supported by children. So Children's Services had undertaken a survey in 2019 and children from Banuel actually identified that online was a really great way to ask for their opinion and their questions. So we knew by, by moving to this particular method that it was going to be supported by our stakeholders being children. So once the engagement plan was improved, um, I began working with the project leads to develop the project content for our online platform, which is Shaping Banuel, which is the hive. Um, this is where we really start to put flesh on the bones uh, by exploring the ask and the most appropriate hive tools to support the ask. Lydia and I worked really closely together during this content development phase, which was great. She was super responsive and open. And I actually think it was Sharon who came up with the particular theme around the recipe for a good life and once that theme was identified the ideas just started flying like little synapses or little sparks of inspiration so it was really fun um, but for this particular project we actually cast a bit of a, a trauma informed lens over our questions and we sought to take more of a global approach by depersonalizing most of our survey questions we also tested our questions on live humans so we had a handful of children <laughs> who trialed the questions and um, including a staff of students at a special development school, a handful of staff members' children, and we also had some other question testers. And we were genuinely responsive to what was being said by our testers. As a result of some last minute feedback, we actually did make 11th hour changes prior to going live. So this was a frantic last dash, but incredibly worthwhile. And I think with engagement, you know, when you're, when you're in the thick of it, you're so deep in the project, sometimes it's difficult to see the forest from the trees. So it's really great to have other people input and, and you know give you some perspective around your project. Luckily with this particular project, given the fluidity of the engagement plan and the restrictions that were changing, we actually had the gift of time, which most of you out there might know is not, not necessarily always afforded in community engagement projects. Because we did have that gift of time, we were really able to explore and refine our project and, and what was possible on Hive. So I guess we, in the planning phase, you know, we've got the bones, we've put the flesh on, and then Belinda in comms actually makes it dance, I guess. Which is really leads us beautifully into all of the promotional activity. Um, Belinda, could you tell us a little bit about the promotional activity that you guys undertook to support this project? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, to, to promote our projects, we normally use printed postcards, posters and signage, which um, we make available at varied locations like neighbourhood houses, libraries, etc. But this was really limited due to um, current lockdown guidelines. So for this project, really, we really had to change it up. Uh, we approached uh, all primary schools in Banyul and sent them an email invitation to participate. And many added our activities to their remote learning schedule. Mm. We did uh, social media promotion via our corporate Facebook page and our Banyul child Facebook pages. Uh, we did promotion in our community newsletter, the Banyul Banner which is delivered to every household in Banyul. Uh, we also did some internal promotion via our online all staff newsletter, the weekly, and at team meetings and other informal opportunities. We just tried to promote this project as much as we could, and I think we did a pretty good job. Uh, we also used other key community stakeholder databases and points of contact, including Banyul neighborhood houses and libraries. And we did promotion through selected community health services for harder to reach engagement groups. It sounds like you were really tested with the current situation to think about creativity at every step of the process. And what that's resulted in is something that's really hit the mark with your end um, customer being the children of Banyol. 
Um, could yeah. you talk to me a little bit about what some of the initial community response has been like? Yeah, sure. The, in, um, the initial community response has been great. Uh, we've had over 1,300 views and some great quality responses from the children. Um, we're really thrilled with the response. Our internal community at Banyul has been really complimentary of our project. Um, we've got a new director of community, community programs going as far to say it's one of the best community engagements she's seen. I know this is a massive call, but for us internally, we're really proud of this project. Uh, this project uh, has been so successful. Um, we're planning on keeping it open a little bit longer until caretaker kicks in, so we can continue to build on the project's moment momentum and excitement while gathering more quality input from our stakeholders. And that was really one of the reasons that we got together so quickly today is that we wanted to promote this and share it with the community while the project was still live so that they would be able to see some of those elements. Um, Sheridan, are there any other pieces around that community input that you'd like to add? Mm. In terms of community input? Um, oh, uh, the, 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 I suppose what the, the um, responses have been, because I know um, that you, 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 know, uh, you spoke to me just about some of that really lovely and feedback that you've got. Oh yeah, I can definitely share some feedback from the kids if you want to hear that. It was, I was sharing this with somebody recently and they said there's this, I, I'm not on socials anything, but they said that there's this Instagram page called lunchtime snack or something, which is all of this input from kids. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of, in this project, we've sort of got our own little lunchtime snack, which just brings a little bit of joy to us. So if you're having a bad day, this is a really good thing to look at. So I've just got some of the survey questions and I can just read some of my favourite responses. That would be so great. one of the questions was, how can we help someone who doesn't have a house clean water or food? And some of the kids wrote share ours with them, which is just so beautiful. Somebody wrote go to the shops, get food for them and give them my pocket money to buy a house, which I love. Uh, what are the things from your culture? that are very important to you and kids reference language storytelling dancing the Wurundjeri people and there was a, a young child who identified that, that they come from an Indian background and mentioned how important their religion is and named some of their festivals somebody said that you know where their parents from and their stories and histories are really important to them and they love hearing about them um, of all the things you're learning what do you think will be most useful when you're older? And this was one of my favourites. Um, some child wrote, knowledge is important, but how to be a good human is most important. So learning about how to love, be patient, have kindness, gentleness and self-control. Um, just so many beautiful things. What's your special ingredient in the recipe for a good life? Thinking about others and love, loving others is the special source needed for a good life. It helps me to not worry about myself and help other people. If we all help each other, that's the best type of life. That's beautiful. Can't script that. <laughs> you really yes. can't script that. You guys have got some gold dust there. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things I was really interested is to understand how the technology enabled you to achieve your goals so far. Okay. Oh. I can answer that. Tech master like. Belinda, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Blushing. Um, <laughs> we really wanted to create a, a diverse, fun, dynamic, and meaningful project to engage children, and I and we I think we achieved this using a number of tools through our through the Hive platform, our Hive platform shaping Banyul. We separated the project into three activities using three different participation tools complemented by other content tools to allow the children to navigate and participate in a way that was engaging and accessible. In activity one, we used the Visioner tool. Um, the Visioner tool allows the children to leave a comment on the page with an instant result and gratification, empowering them and building confidence that their ideas and opinions will be heard, seen and valued. We then, um, move on to activity two, where we use the, the form tool, the paginated component of the form tool to allow us to break down the key themes of the project and present it in a way that was not too overwhelming to the children. And in activity three, we used the gather tool. Um, this tool allowed the children to upload their ideas as images to express what represents a good life to them. 
this tool was also a way for us to collect artwork from the children to be displayed in an exhibition as part of Children's Week 2020, an exhibition which will showcase the children and their contributions. The project was built in a way that all three activities flowed in a progressive thinking pattern. Mm -hmm. The call to action button allowed us to achieve this. We placed a call to action button at the bottom of each activity page, which allowed the project to flow more fluidly between activities, making it easier to navigate before doing a complete loop and taking the child back to the, the project home page. Uh, we use embedded instructional videos, which are a way to increase accessibility and make it a more relatable for children. Um, COVID-19 and restrictions put a hold on many engagement projects at Council. It gave us the opportunity to explore and experiment with the Hive tools and build a project that really showcased the capabilities of the Hive. So my advice is to take the time to experiment with the tools available and know that anything is possible. Um, thank you, Belinda. I think we are so proud of the work that you've been able to achieve. I wanted to ask you about your um, videos that you created. You've got some amazing little snippets there that really did talk to the children mm -hmm. um, and the results are, are sort of a, a testament to that. But how did you go about doing that? And, you know, you guys are all in lockdown. How did you find the children? How did you shoot it? You guys have really overcome a lot of barriers. Yeah, it was difficult at the beginning. Um, we were really lucky that the project lead Libby, um, her daughters are heavily involved in performing arts. So they were <laughs> really keen to help out. So she just filmed them on her iPhone at home and did a great job. There was no editing required. The girls are just naturals. Mm -hmm. And then just obviously sent it to comms for some, um, for some captioning and just some, some major minor edits, but nothing major. So we were really lucky that it, um, it all came together for us really quickly because the turnaround, that was something that we had to turn around pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on, you know, never saying um, it's not possible. Like I feel like you guys really pushed each other and, and your team to go the extra mile on this project. I'm really keen to understand what have been some of the highlights so far for you? Mm, the highlights so far have been watching our vision become a reality online. It's just, it's, like I mentioned earlier, a significant amount of thinking actually went into the planning and, um, you know, to, to ensure it was going to meet our engagement purpose and key objectives. So having look, feel and function of the project matched our vision while meeting our engagement purpose and objectives is such a great feeling. And the amount of interest and praise for the project has also been incredible and really unexpected. And we genuinely love sharing this project. We're really proud of it. It was just, it was a, a lot of work went in, but it was a really fun, really rewarding project to be part of. And I think that that sort of shines through. Um, but above all else, you know, reading the responses of the children has been an absolute highlight. You know, they're so pure in response and creative. Um, they've got great wisdom and insights and perspective and, and their responses just continually blow my mind. So that's been an absolute highlight. Um, I know that one of the things is so important is reporting back and sharing your findings. Um, what are you guys thinking about doing in that particular area and looping back on all this amazing um, work that you've done? Well, I've had a chat with Sharon and Libby. So children's services are going to continue to involve the children in the conversation and deep dive um, into some of the opportunities and issues highlighted. Our consultation findings will also be made available on the project page, which is part of our usual practice. We'll also re-engage all of the channels of promotion that Belinda mentioned earlier on. Um, findings will be shared internally as well because there's data that's coming out of this project that'll be relevant for different teams across the organisation, you know, such as the environment team, open space, leisure and culture, community safety, just to name a few. Um, we also intend to share the artwork as part of a children's art um, exhibition, Children's Week art exhibition, which will probably happen online this year. Um, and I think we might, you know, come up with some other fun and creative ways to share these findings in keeping with the spirit of the project. And again, tapping into the collective wisdom and experience here on this particular platform, we welcome any sharing or ideas from the online community too, in terms of what might be a cool, different, nice way to share these findings. So we're absolutely open to any new fun things that we could do. Um 
I was really interested to know whether um, the, the success that you've had and the process that you've gone through may inform maybe some of your more adult projects or maybe some of your um, drier projects. Like, do you think that you guys will approach things, ask different questions in your, your, uh, your engagements going forward? Well, at this particular point in time, I think what, what this particular project demonstrates is the place that children have as active voices in engagement. So we might look to have place for children as part of our engagement on other more drier, less fun projects. Um, and again, because we have, you know, because we are moving through this particular time with COVID and restrictions, we are really exploring what's possible on the hive and getting a little bit more creative with the tools. So we've got We've got a project up at the moment that we street streetscape upgrade, um, and we've used a little swipe function tool. Um, we've used Q and A, so we're really we're really um, kind of cracking open our brains and expanding our thinking about what's possible online given what we're working with. So, um, I'd like to think that this can make our projects more dynamic and interesting. Um, hopefully, if if we can continue to carry on that child like spirit and enthusiasm but again like you said you know some projects are just really dry um, but yeah, we'll do our best we'll do our best well you know yeah. you've lived I'd, I'd love it if they're all this fun <laughs> you've lifted the bar for all of that so we might be what we might be peeking in to see what you guys are doing um, yeah. there's been some questions coming through um, on the chat um, channel so I'm going to just ha um, move to those if that's okay with you guys yeah sure. absolutely uh, how did you go about getting permissions from guardians, etc.? So I did see that was funny. This is my first ever session like this, and I did see that one pop up. Um, I believe I'll probably have to refer to Libby and Sharon, the project leads and children's services. We really did consider permission. I know through our promotion, we did encourage um, trusted adults, so parents, carers, teachers, to be involved in the consultation with children in supporting that process. So they were encouraged to be involved. In activity three, we do have a consent form that is to be completed with the uploading of the images. Um, but uh, yeah, I know that there were some conversations internally around permission around this particular project, but I can't quite remember the exact, exact answer but I know we did ask permission and support from adults and carers and yeah, we had the permission form for activity three. So hopefully um, I'm happy to take that on notice and drill down a little bit further with Sharon and um, Lydia, and we'll, if you'd like. We'll, we'll very specific to ask only for the child's first name and age and not delving too deeply with detail. Yeah. So when we asked for feedback, it was only, or we asked when we uploaded, when the kids were asked to upload their artwork, that we were only asking for a first name, not a school, yeah. just a first name and an age. So it was keeping them quite anonymous. Yeah, de As anonymous as possible. Yeah. 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 Uh, what we plan to do is we plan to host this video on the Learning Centre um, and we discussed yesterday creating a conversation panel um, where I thought um, people could actually post some of the questions that we're not going to get through today and maybe we could pop that in there um, and Sheridan and Belinda could then come in and answer those questions and any others that pop up over the next couple mm. of days. Would that work for you guys? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I do, I do believe with this particular question, though, with the de-identifiable data, encouraging parents and carers to be involved and the last permission, that might be it. But if there's any other thing we can add to that around permission, absolutely, we'll add some extra detailing. Thanks, Sheridan. Here's another question. What advice have you for a council that hasn't done a lot of child or children consultation as a first step? Well, this is a first for us as well, so we're still <laughs> learning. <laughs> um, for us, you know, working with children's services, so the experts in children, is really key to this project. You know, they understand their stakeholders at a really, you know, a really detailed, intimate level. And, you know, tapping into that wisdom and knowledge that exists within that team, you know, they're, they're the ones who live and breathe children every day. Um, and then for us, it was just a matter of kind of casting your mind back and thinking about being a child or, you know, the language that you might use, how much detail you'd want to go into. You know, I remember when Belinda and I were talking about this particular project and I was working on the Shaping Banual content with Libby 
um, you know, in our Excel spreadsheet, I was talking to Belinda and, you know, normally there's a whole heap of content that happens on these projects, on any project that goes up online. And I was saying to Belinda, it's all right, you know, there's not going to be a whole heap of, it's not going to be really content heavy, this particular project. So we really just stripped back the amount of information that's needed. So just, I guess, put a, you know, put your thinking cap on, like mentioned in the video, um, put your thinking cap on and go back to kind of a, a child mindset and tap into the wisdom that exists within your council as well. Um, yeah, watch children, observe children. You know, I'm aware that children, you know, at this particular, you know, this particular time in history, they, they YouTube, you know, they YouTube a lot. So they watch yeah. short little clips on different things, which is, you know, how we were inspired to do the instructional videos rather than having to read content. Let's get children to talk to children about what the ask is instead of us, you know. So just, um, yeah, just think about what's possible and what might be fun for a kid. And then test it on kids too. Yeah, testing was a big thing. Mm. Yep. Testing sounded... that the instructions were clear and accessible and legible. Yeah. Yeah, kids are the experts. It sounded to me through everything that you guys have spoken to me about is that collaboration internally was really critical, mm. but also that you guys were a little bit brave and you had the courage to say, actually, we want to do something extraordinary we want to do something that's really going to achieve the end outcome and how what might that look like um that internal collaboration just seemed to shine through mm, dream definitely. team belinda wasn't it we were lucky we had a um let me put a lot of trust in sheridan and i and they are a creative team as well so together the three of the the Sheridan, myself, and um, libby worked really well together it was it was a great experience all around I know it was funny when it went live we were kind of a bit like oh <laughs> <laughs> the dream's over Jeez. well I know Libby's uh, on the um on the call as well and um just oh, yeah, pop, great. Pop, 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 the rest of the team Sean and the rest of the team are saying they're having a proud moment um if you hadn't already read that comment oh, I haven't no. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm trying to stay yeah, yeah, you know like multitasking uh, here, here's another one how much engagement did you get in the end by your local schools Oh, we can't really, we can't really strip it out to sort of local schools. We don't really know where, where that information and contribution has come from. Um, I do know Libby created a really great supplement to the project. That was an ask from a local school. So they were really keen to share the project with the students, um, but just needed a little bit of further information. I believe that particular, um, resources sitting up on the Shaken Banyul site as well. But once all the information and input comes through, we actually don't know whether it's come from, you know, school A or school Z. So, um, yeah, but they, they seemed keen, they were receptive, but you just don't know whether it translates into the doing yeah. bit. Yeah. One of the questions has come through is, do you know the um, youngest age of the, um, the one of the children that contributed? Do you have a sense of that yet? Or you haven't maybe looked at all of the detail yet? No, I haven't Ooh. personally looked at all the detail. Libby may have. I did look. I know there are a lot of seven-year-olds. They no, were targeting, uh, I think, grade the main target audience was grade three to grade six. Okay. So grade three would be eight. nine. Yeah. Eight or nine, I'd say. So we'd have to go and look deeper into that. Once you get the data. Yeah. 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 I, I think we did get a five-year-old um, okay. as well. Mm. And um, we'll, we'll definitely be circling back to you guys once you've done your analysis to put some of the final touches. We've, um, we'll be publishing a blog together with this today, which basically gives everyone the sort of the overall view of this. Um, I know there's a couple of questions about um, how you are aiming um, to pass on information to both parents and children um, around what you're going to be doing with that information. Um, will you just be doing that through the project page or will you go back to any of your other channels? I think the plan is to go back to some of the key stakeholders that would include the schools to feed back that information. But specifically, um, I haven't got any details as how Lib how Libby and Sheridan are, and Sharon are going to do that. So unless Sheridan, Sheridan, do you know the specifics? No, I don't. I don't know, Libby. If you're on, if you're on, 
Uh, she, she may be um, able no. to put it into chat. <laughs> she could be, uh, yeah, yeah. Libby's actually just said in chat that four schools got in touch to indicate they were using it. Great. Um, and Sharon has said that the youngest child so far was six years old. Oh, okay. my um, Six. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Libby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should have got your heads up here as well. Um, there's a question that's come through from Monash Council, Diana. Thank you for that. Are you planning to a separate engagement for secondary schools um, and older kids in the future? Look, that will sit with our youth services team. Youth, youth services tend to do a lot of engagement throughout the year through their programs, initiatives and activities. So definitely there will be a, a younger people kind of teen focused engagement that will happen. Um, and I guess watch this space for that particular project, but definitely, definitely, because it is the child, youth and family plan contribution. So the children were one, one stakeholder amongst many. Yeah, so definitely. There's a couple of questions that are coming through about the specific numbers and, and analysis. And I know you guys haven't finished doing that, um, but we'll all be watching um, for that as it comes through. So for those of you that are asking for how many have engaged and what the contributions have been so far, I know the guys are still you know, uh, analysing that because the project's still open, yeah? Mm, yeah, yeah, it's open till the 22nd of this month. I've got our summary up now. We've had over 2,000 views. There's been over 700 visitors and 118 contributions at this particular point in time. And counting. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're out there and you live in Banyul and you've got kids, send them over. We want your children. For this activity and <laughs> um, there's there's so many positive um, comments in the chat section um, will um, I'll ask Andrew to scrape those so that we make sure that you guys don't miss out on any of that feedback that's come through um, just in our closing I just wanted to say if there's any final questions pop them in now um, and we'll um, make sure that the guys um, answer those um, but I want to do, um, express a really special thank you um, to Belinda and Sheridan for pir uh, pirouetting with me on, on what was an incredibly short turnaround from uncovering this project and making it available to our community um, before the end of Caretaker. I really appreciate what you guys did to make that possible. And to Libby and the rest of the team, thank you so much for being involved. Um, please join me in thanking Belinda and Sheridan for their time today and sharing their insights. We'll post the video and start the conversation in the Learning Centre over the next couple of days. Belinda and Sheridan will get in there and answer any questions that they haven't already answered. Um, if you're interested in getting in touch with the team at Banyul, drop me an email and I'll connect you. Um, but overall, thank you so much for joining us. I feel like you've done exactly what we intended, which is to lift the community of practice and give us some new ideas of how we might be able to use um, that planning stage to get the best use out of technology and reach out not only to children, but to others in our community. So thank you very much. Any final words from you, Sheridan and Belinda? No. Thank you to Libby thank and Sharon and especially for sitting in on this, this particular session today. So thank you out there so much for that. Um, and I really want to try a virtual high five to end the meeting because I haven't... <laughs> I don't know whether that works, but... <laughs> Why not? Why not? Thank you so much, guys. Yeah.